Hey everybody, it's Mike from Motorflows and welcome to today's video. You know, today is Monday, January 16th, 2023. It's Martin Luther King Day here in the U.S. So the cash markets are closed. The futures are open, but, you know, it's sort of that, uh, you know, next trade date scenario where, you know, even though we opened up Sunday night as per normal, um, you know, we trade until 12 o'clock and then it goes into a halted period until 5 o'clock and then it reopens. And it's all considered the same trade date for trade date Tuesday. Um, so basically, you know, any trades you did Sunday night, Monday morning, it will be for trade day Tuesday because it's a non-clearing day. And, you know, people have always asked me, you know, how, how do you trade, you know, these days where it's like a holiday period or a holiday itself, um, you know, where volumes are light? Well, it's simple. You, you, you just don't trade it, right? You, you just wait for the time when volumes are there. Now, you know, there's nothing wrong with watching the markets. It's just that, um, you know, on days like today, you know, uh, uh, a non-clearing trading day where the markets are open, but you know the underlying you know cash markets are are closed, like in the S and P's. Um, you're not going to get very much movement, right? You're going to get movement. You know, people are still trading it for whatever reason, and you know it's it's just moving very slow. So you got to keep in mind that you know if you're using your normal profit targets, they might not get hit at all in that session. Okay, so, you know, you can see here basically from, you know, 11 to 11.25 on my chart, we're basically trading between 40.11 to 40, you know, call it 40.13, you know, a, a two-point range over 20 minutes. It's just not, you know, going anywhere. And it's, it's frustrating because sometimes you're so used to how the market moves during a normal trading day that, you know, on a day like today, you're sitting there, you're like, uh, it's like watching paint dry, honestly. Um, at least there was some movement in the S and P's. I mean, we did, you know, go from about 20 down to 10, you know, here was, what is that? 19 and a quarter. We got down to around the 10 ish area. Um, but again, you know, you, you don't have to trade every single day, right? There's nobody putting a gun to your head and saying, Oh, you got to trade, but if you have to, or you want to, or you want to get some screen time, you know, my suggestion is to watch the market outside of the U S right watch things like you know the 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 nikai during the asian hours or buns um as well you know but again you got to be watching it during that time zone ideally because after you know their cash market closes in the buns there's just nothing happening you know in, in the u.s there is some movement you can see here but obviously the the good movement is going to happen you know during the european time so let's just sort of go back and you can see the the nice movements that you're getting here. And what was interesting was, you know, this was a great example of supply coming into the market. Now, generally, you're going to see supply coming into the market when prices are rallying, right? Because that's a great time for people with supply to sell it very easily, right? If you have supply and the market's rallying, it's, it's easy to move size. But what do you do when you have supply to move and the market's dropping? Well, if the market is dropping, you don't necessarily want to be hitting all the bids, right? Because the more you hit the bids, the more traders see that, you know, volume is coming in on the bid side, you know, and pushing the market down. So what you have to do when a market is dropping, now when I say what you have to do, what I mean is what the big traders will do. I mean, us, the small traders, you know, our, our five contracts isn't going to really influence the market one way or the other. But if you're a big trader, Okay, and you know you've got supply to move. Once it sort of hits that tipping point, you got to be careful because you don't want to give it away, so to speak. You know, give away your hand on what you're trying to do in the market of get rid of your supply by just hitting all the bids. So you can see in here, right? This move down, right? Basically from 138, you know, we'll call it 138.15 all the way down to um, you know this area here, 137.65. So you know, more or less about a 50 point drop and pretty quick, you know, in about less than 30 minutes. Okay. So you can see, you know, the sellers coming in, they're being aggressive. They're hitting the bids here, 147, you know, the 36, the 54, the 110. You got those selling imbalances. It continues in the next bar. You're seeing some more selling imbalances in here. Now you're seeing some buying imbalances. Okay. I'll get to that in a second. But sort of once you start coming down into the low, right? And you've been, if you're a big seller, and you're trying to 
sell, you're going to get to that point where it's like, okay, you know, we're above the low. I could, I could be aggressive, but when you start coming into the low, you got to be a little bit, you got to start finessing the order, right? You can't just go in and start hitting every single bid in there. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be working offers, right? Offers on the way down. And you can sort of start to see it coming in in here, right? I mean, there were 700 that traded at this 138.11 on the bid. But then, you know, there was a nice offer that came in, again, for 400 here. Okay, so you're seeing the volume is starting to pick up. Sellers are coming in, right? They're, they're already coming in because you can see that aggressive selling as the market is dropping. Now you're starting to see the offers come in here, right? The 427. And then when you hit that sort of that, that tipping point, which is the low of the day, the 138 even, you know, 138 even is, it's, it's, a, it's a figure, right? It's, it's a nice round number. It's the low of the day. And as opposed to just sort of coming in and just, you still got, remember, people, big traders got supply, right? They got to get rid of it. Coming into the low, rather than just go hit all the bids, right? They have to finesse it. So they're going to be working offers, right? The 345, the 222, right? The, the 311, the 307, okay? Even here, 400. You see this market making new lows for one bar, two bars, three bars, four bars, five, six, seven. I mean, we'll call it six. I mean, three is is not much. But you got six solid bars with six solid positive deltas. This sort of goes against what your brain is, is has learned about order flow because normally you expect market to be going down on negative delta. But why is it going down on this positive delta? Well, the reason it's going down on the positive delta is because you have big sellers you know that are working passive orders that are absorbing whatever buying there is off this low and look at this as you're coming down into the low it's pretty consistent right the 200 400 300 300 300 right so it's they're, they're there right at look at this this is coming at 91 92 94 95 97 Right, and even here at at O2. So basically, between 97 and 91, you're seeing decent size offers come in at pretty much every price level. Right, 97, 95, 94, 92, 91. Right, for at least you know, well, this is 300, 347, 300, 400, and, and this is just 200. But you're seeing some solid offers coming in. Okay, and you know, that should be a clue to you that, hey, you know what, supply is coming in. But what was interesting is when you start putting it together, you're seeing, yeah, I had that aggressive selling as we're coming into the low, okay? But then as we come into the low, that aggressive selling, I mean, there's still obviously aggressive selling because we're taking out the lows, but what you're seeing trailing it is the big offers coming in, the, the passive sellers, people that ha still have stuff to sell, but they don't want to just come in and just hit all the bids to help add fuel to this move down because then once we sort of break this you know even you break this 80s you know this low here you know we still got moved down to into the 60s another 20 points all right even get down into the 50s down in here but that was you know that was very interesting to see that happening in the buns this morning now this is a, a one minute chart okay so you know that was a nice movement um currencies okay you no know, you know so there's you could look at uh you know currencies because you know the cash markets are always you know basically it's 24 hours a day um 24 6 now british pound okay so british pound is is you know it's become one of my favorite currencies to trade whoops 6b should be um it's sort of like a sometimes it trades like a like an altcoin uh, so this is a one minute chart and you can see during the U.S. session, it, it's pretty quiet. But, you know, what you'd want to be looking at is is during the European session, right? The British, the English hours, so to speak, GMT time. Um, and just sort of going back in here. Now, this is on a one minute chart. OK, whether you're using a one minute chart, a five minute chart, it doesn't matter. Right. Because you're still going to see 
the information. It's just going to be plotted differently. So this is a, a, a one minute chart. But what was interesting, you know, again, similar thing. We're coming down into the lows. And what do you see, right? You, you see some, you know, aggressive selling. But then you see, you know, the big volumes coming in, sort of trailing it down. Now it's coming 449 lots, you know, a seller there for close to 450 at this 211 period. Okay, so I, I know that, you know, we're coming into the low. I see a big seller coming in on the offer side, not a big seller hitting the bid side, but a big offer coming in. It's telling me, you know, yeah, there's, there's probably some supply in this market. If you were to go to a, a five-minute chart, what time is that? It was around 2 in the morning. Um, let's we'll pull up a five-minute chart here a little bit because you have sort of a, a slightly different uh, view of what was happening in the market. But again, you know, coming down into, into new lows and you're seeing, you know, the big offer coming in. We had just traded there. Then a big offer is coming in. And you'll notice what happens in this, where that offer is, you know, the, the 122.30, right? You just draw the line here, right? Came off, came right back within a tick of that and sold off some more. Again, from this, once it sort of took off these lows, then, you know, it dropped from 14 down into the 80s pretty quick. You know, this was less than an hour. Nice move there. But again, you know, on slow days, you know, what I would key in on is things like the volume. You know, how is it appearing, you know, if you're making new highs or new lows? Is it supportive to the market or is it acting as resistance? You know, or is the supply coming into the market or is demand coming into the market? That's what you want to be asking yourself when you're watching the market on a slow day. And again, you know, personally, I think slow days like today, you know, it's going to be slow. I mean, you don't have to sit here and stare at the screen for two hours saying, oh, this is slow. You, just, you, know, you can anticipate it's going to be a slow day. So just take the day off. But again, you know, if you're going to be trading on a day like today, like a holiday, clearing holiday, um, look for signs in the order flow in terms of big volume. And where is it transacting? Is it transacting on the bid side or the offer side and what it means to the market? So, all right, everybody, enjoy the rest of your day off and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.